Hello everyone! Thank you so much for being here. I'm still kind of feeling like I'm struggling through this darn time change. I feel like it's on another level this year. I don't know why, but I'm a little better today than I was yesterday. And um, this video, I don't have an exact theme in terms of products. You're going to see a few new things pop in, some older things and whatever, but I just kind of wanted to do a fresh sort of springy look because there is a certain palette I'm going to be using on the eyes and I just, I I want to play with this some more. I've used it now how many times? Three, four times? I'll uh, pop up pictures when we get there about some of the looks that I've done, but I want to go kind of colorful and fun with that part of the look today. First off, I am going to pull for my Benefit Professional again. I'm in kind of a professional mode these days. I just really like the texture and how this seems way creamier. I said this in the last video. It seems way creamier than I remember it being years ago. So I put it on and it immediately just blurs the pores, feels nice and smoothing. I could see this being maybe not enough moisture, especially if you didn't moisturize well underneath your look, but I have a lot of moisture on like around my eyes and everywhere. So when this goes on, I just end up feeling really good about everything. For my foundation, I am going to be using something new. Um, this is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation, and it says 30% bonus. I didn't know I was getting a bonus in here. Okay, I wear the shade Capri. I actually went in store and I picked this out. Like I shade matched myself. And let me tell you, there were a lot of shades to choose from. It says Natural Radiance Foundation, Easy Glide Foundation for a flawlessly radiant and luminous complexion, Weightless Water Resistant Formula, Buildable Medium Coverage, they say, Natural Glow. Um, I feel like the coverage is super impressive with this one. And also, what's going on with the smell? Who's tried this? Like I've never tried a foundation that has this much like, wow scent. Like fruity kind of? I don't know. It's not anything you go on to smell throughout your day, but I wonder if the fragrance being in there is something that would cause trouble for some people. I'm not sure, but this is what a full pump looks like. I guess a full pump is kind of big from this, and I'm just going to bounce it in. And who did I see using this? Southern West Sunshine on TikTok? The girl who's always like experimenting with rollers and different hair curling methods and stuff. And she was using this and I thought, wow, that looks full coverage. And it really does on me too. Maybe I could get away with less. Like if I used half a pump, I'd have that buildable medium coverage. But when you go for a pump, you're pretty much getting full. And I've used it so far with this full pump and in a lot of cases, you might hear me say like, oh, I, that was too much. Maybe that affected the wear throughout the day. No, it's worn beautifully with the full pump. I can't really complain. Here I am putting it on with the sponge and that coverage is extreme. It's spring break. The kids are home. We do have a little outing plan for like the upcoming weekend. Bub has had a lot of work stuff that he had to be present for this week. But yeah, we've got another little St. Louis trip planned and I think we're going to get to see Aunt Pup and it's just going to be awesome. Oh, I didn't shake at that time. It says shake well with cap facing downward. I didn't do that, but it didn't seem like separated in any way. It does have kind of a glow on the skin. See that? It's not matte but it doesn't feel sticky at all. We're gonna do a little one-two punch with concealer today to be extra bright. And first I'm gonna use my Sephora Best Skin Ever. This is the full coverage multi-use concealer, which I wear in 11.5 P. And I was discussing this in my last video, how I just think this is a really solid concealer just for all purpose needs, you know, it goes over blemishes well, it attacks discoloration well, it seems to handle the under eye. It's been a very good and enjoyable concealer for me and it wears really nicely too. So here I'm taking the end of my e.l.f. duo brush and I'm spreading it around. This is not for the purpose of blending it in at this moment, I am just spreading it around. This shade is really good for me because see how it's like a hint stepped up from my skin tone, but it's not like a night and day difference. And then I'm going in with my Milani sponge. And instead of just dabbing over little unblended dots, I'm going over the surface area where that stuff has been spread out. And I feel like I get a really even blend. I get more bang for my buck out of my concealer. So so it's hard to make it seem like springtime here because it is very cold. It was in the 30s yesterday. Anytime I got out of the car, it's like, Whoa. we still had dance and like we have our activities still this week. Dance rules, by the way. Thank you, Miss Hillary, if you're watching. The songs that the kids will be dancing to for their upcoming show. 
Awesome. So we, we did that layer, and then we're going to go in with some of the Age Rewind Brightener. This stuff is making a comeback, like in the beauty world. I even saw somebody talk about it recently like it was new. I mean, this has been around for a long time, but people are wanting that pinky tone brightness on the under eyes, so I'm just dabbing a little bit there, and then I'm going to go in and blend it with my sponge. I do not have a scrape here. I just have paint on me. We've been painting rocks. What have you been doing on spring break? Oh, we've just been painting rocks. No, it, it is fun. I reorganized an entire area of the laundry room. Like, I guess you maybe call it a mud room. Bub has constructed this whole awesome thing for us where it looks kind of like each kid has their own place to like hang a backpack, hang a coat, a lunch bag, there's shoe bins underneath, there's bins for more storage up top, and it's caused me to like rework some of the other stuff in the room. So I created a couple of shelves that are really accessible. This stuff used to be in like, does anybody have one of those things that looks like a little bench? It looks like wood all over. It's got kind of a seat on it. We have that in what we call the fireplace room, and you open it up, and it had a bunch of like games and puzzles for kids inside. But the kids always struggled with getting stuff out, opening it up. Somebody had something sitting on top of it and then you know things come crashing down. It was just not very user friendly for them so when things got shifted around in our laundry mud room I was able to move some stuff off of other shelves, move stuff into Bub's new storage that he made and make way in another area for like kids puzzles, grown-up puzzles board games. In the mix, I found several <laughs> kits that I guess maybe they'd been given as gifts a time or two. Uh, I remember Bell won one at school, but they're rock painting kits, and it really is fun. However, that paint is not washable paint because the idea is really I think that you can take these rocks and you can like plant them outdoors like you can go not really plant them go leave them in public outdoor places and other people will find them and there's even whole like rock communities this came up years ago in my area and there's like a southern Illinois rock finding thing a whole group on Facebook by the way are we brightened enough there on that under eye so it started we painted one box worth of rocks like it came with the rocks it came with the paint the paint brushes the paint that doesn't come off of anything and then last night they're like we want to paint more rocks so we had two more kits and we used them both I need some loose powder you know what I'm gonna use for loose powder today good old Maybelline fit me yep good stuff classic oh, I am thrilled with the storage that Bub has made there because we had such a time with coats just getting draped over chairs, backpacks being put really on top of that little bench where games and a lot of other things that they like to use a lot were previously stored, lunch bags just like pushed into corners. This house needed this and it's got three little stations. Bubba right now, he has his like coat and hat hanging there but he'll have a lunch bag eventually too. Okay, uh, this is fair, and this is my little puff. So Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, good stuff. Um, by the way, I recently repurchased Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in a lighter shade. It's kind of like a little brightening touch-up powder. It's quite nice. That is a good powder. And someone had asked me in the comments recently, like they had a teenager who wanted to try powder, but they didn't want it to be powder foundation, just like a little something light to use to control shine. I'm like, try the Maybelline Matte and Poreless. That's a good one. We're just hitting the T-zone, but the skin is not screaming for this. And that foundation felt juicy for a bit, but it's just, it, it set up, you know? Why do I feel like I'm not in focus at all? So I've got that powder on, and then I just kind of immediately dust, lick it away, whatever. Microwaving, not quite baking. Next up, I've been TikTok influenced again. Um, I got the NYX Wonder Stick, the dual ended face shaping stick. This is in the shade Universal Light. So it has one end that is a very classic looking contour and the other end is kind of a glowy highlight. But I follow a girl who is an LSU um, Tiger Girls dancer and the Tiger Girls, I mean, they are like gold standard of college dancers. If you've ever watched them at UCA Nationals, they slay. They are so good. This past year's um, hip hop routine, I believe they danced in like stiletto heels. It was an amazing routine. Anywho, I follow a girl on there and she talks about this all the time. And so I kind of thought, well, you know, I haven't tried that. Maybe I should. I do like it so far. It's not like world's creamiest, dreamiest contour stick because I've tried some really good ones. Do a little bit down here, but not a ton. But it's been good so far. As you can see, the tone is really nice. See that? Like, I'm giving it a little push. I'm giving it a little nudge in there with the brush. It's not quite as creamy as your Persona or your M Cosmetics, but it's also not the price of those either. 
But yeah, I can get it fully blended into the skin. And you know, I feel like the thing about TikTok and the thing about YouTube as well and any social media platform, like I really do have a fascination with what random people like to use. Yeah, this girl's on a prestigious dance team and I'm interested to see what she likes to use, but I'm really kind of interested to see in the makeup bags of anyone, honestly. Look at that, like, nice. Get that light bulb area like JLo called it. The area right under your chin. <laughs> Okay, so here we are. Boop, boop, kind of chiseled. Trying, striving. Pup and I came up with a term a while back, SWT, striving while tired. I want more, I want more glow. Like I want to feel like I went somewhere tropical. Oh, you know what we're bringing back? What shady beaches from Wet n Wild. Yes, this is kind of a rich bronzer, but it's fun. Get a little bit on my BK Beauty 107. And we're just gonna add that in here to this hairline. The hairline is so stark today because we're all slicked back because the hair, frankly, is not clean today. See, it's just adding a little something. A little something. I'm gonna let a little bit come up on the cheek now. See, just lightly. It's kind of a whatever's left on the brush type situation. For the cheeks, I think I'm gonna use my um, Hard Candy Selfie stuff. The last time I popped this on, I know I already had something else on my skin, so it wasn't like the clearest look at what this does. So let's just try. You'll notice it immediately turns pinky, and I have felt like I didn't wanna get too much on my skin because I worry about it breaking down the stuff underneath. It has sort of a serum-y quality to it. It's not like a Benetint where it just seemed like straight liquid and then it set there's some moisture in this. And I think another time I was playing with it, I used too much and it felt like it broke down coverage underneath. Look at that freshness. That's nice. Somebody asked in a comment, why do you use so much blush? It looks, you know, they went on with it. I, I kind of forgot the insult end of it, which is a beautiful beautiful thing. I'm glad I'm at that point. But it started with why do you use so much blush? Because I'm in a state of pure joy when I'm putting it on. I love it. I'm adding a little. I just enjoy the process and I feel like by the end of the look it all comes together. This is a blush heavy channel, all right? Like if we could put a little warning, you know, it's not like rated R, rated PG-13 or anything like that, but it's rated Extreme blush, XB, okay? I like blush and it makes me happy to use it and I just enjoy the process. Now, see what that added? Not only a little bit of like rosy flush, but a little bit of dewiness. Can you see how the surface of the skin just took that on? Yeah, kind of like it, kind of scared of it. <laughs> don't want to overuse it because I don't want to mess up the underneath stuff. It's highly likely we will be adding more blush by the end of this. In makeup. I can't state this enough. If something I do doesn't make you happy, doesn't feel right on your face, feels like a bad move, don't do it. If you've got certain ways you love your look that just makes you feel like, yes, I'm enjoying this so much, I don't give a rip what anyone else thinks. Like, get into those things, that's fine. That's the beautiful thing. I'm wearing this face of makeup and you're wearing your own face of makeup. And I really have seen my channel less as, oh, M's this expert sitting down telling us how to do it. No, I see it as this is my makeup journey and I love talking about makeup and I am in a continuous state of learning but there are some things that I just know I love and one of those is blush. I'm gonna pull in a little Milani highlighter. This is the baked highlighter that they have in the shade Dolce Perla and I feel like I've always veered toward their strobe light highlighter in Afterglow. Like I just feel like that can stand up to absolutely any high-end highlight period. Any ultra shimmery high-end highlight. Like it's obviously different from a Laura Geller baked French vanilla and some of those more subtle ones that I like too, but I mean, it pops. And then I feel like I've had this one for so long and it's just kind of flown under the radar because the other one I feel is so outstanding, but wow, that's brightness, okay? That delivers straight brightness. I love that, really good, it's really soft. I have a little uh, fuzzy trying to also become part of it. Yes, beautiful. Oh, I forgot we have that highlighter on the other end of the NYX thing. Doggone it. Now she's left out. I did use this on my Cupid's bow the other day. Like, I like a little highlight right in here. 
Just tap it in. It really does something, you know? We can add a little of that too. It's pretty. What's the color on it? You know, it's like a very light champagne. So the shade on this is Universal Light. You'll notice the shade of the contour was really workable. It wasn't too deep. Popping. If you think you got too much, just, I don't know. Go over it with your beauty blender. <laughs> Here's where the face is at right now, my loves. Great coverage, but pretty glowy at this point. I gotta grab for something other than L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer, right? Always pulling that out. Let's use the Precisely My Brow from Benefit in the shade four. And let's grab also that Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit. This is just another skinny brow pencil, my friends. Doesn't have to be this brand. Anybody else feel like those brows have to be extra good on days when your hair is pulled back? <laughs> like those brows need to be on point. That was quick. And then brush through. What a difference a brow makes. Yes. I am excited to take the rocks that we painted and just leave them about town like the Easter Bunny. Did you know that Bubba sometimes gets called Ugga? That's his alternate nickname. I don't know why. I think it's from Daniel Tiger, Ugga Mugga. But anyway. His new phrase is, that'll be fun. You bring up doing something and he's like, oh, that'll be fun. He's such a sweetheart. A little tornado in this house, but a sweetheart. Trying to make those brows even. I hate like getting to the end of the look and feeling like I missed a spot in the brows, you know? So I'm trying to be vigilant. So does anybody live where there's been like blizzard conditions here lately? I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't have minded like one more good snowstorm down here in Southern Illinois. It's just how I am. I like it. Fluff up brow wax. It's like liquid brow wax. I am slow to let go of winter. Like I have decorated for Easter in my house, but there's always a feeling of reluctance. When I decorate for fall, oh, Oh man, I'm decorating for fall and I'm just skipping through the house and I'm having a great time. And then when I'm decorating for Christmas, I'm just like, woohoo, it's Christmas time. We're putting up the Christmas decor. And when I start decorating for spring, I mean, it, I'm just like, oh, are we, is, it, is it already time? Why am I like that? I mean, I love Christmas. I love the cold weather seasons too much. All of our birthdays are in those seasons. I don't know. I just, I like warm and cozy. By the way, I didn't turn my lights on back here today. I knew something was missing in the background. Who's ready for some fun? This is what you came for. Italian Spritz from Too Faced. I am excited about this palette. When I saw that kind of all over the place color scheme, I thought I'm gonna enjoy that. Uh, I've been looking for a palette to get excited about. This one really brings some fun and lots of different directions you can go. First day I got it, I already had an eye look on, but I took this light shimmery blue because that's a big part of my life like high school existence. I used a lot of light shimmery blue eyeshadow, but I took that and I mixed in those deeper shimmers down at the bottom. Did those in my outer crease and it was beautiful. I actually really liked that little makeshift, just like getting it home and really eager to try it kind of look. And then what did I do? I went with like pinks and peachy warmth. And I think I used a combination of like these top two shimmers that have kind of a peachy slash rose goldness to them. That was really pretty and fun, but I have had to work a little bit on the application of some of these shimmers. Some of them, like, you can try your brush application, but you very well may be resorting to a finger with that. And then I did sort of classic neutral look. We worked in the brown, different warm browns. Yeah, I did this gold on the lid. I did a little bit of that on the outer lid. There's a really interesting color selection in terms of the mattes, though. Mattes are here, this little corner. A very classic little corner right there. Um, we got matte here, here, these two yum, peanut butter and jelly, right here, and these two. And then differing textures of the shimmers, like the blue, I had no problem applying that with a brush. But then we hop right over here and it's like, yeah, that's a little resistant. That's a little struggling a little bit off the brush. This one, kind of a little bit smoother, applies a little bit better. That's that shimmering brown. This one I definitely used a finger on. And then these blues were okay with the brush, but they're like real shimmery. See the darkness there? So where are our dark shades? Well, it's those rich shimmery blues. One of them is a little bit more blackened, I'd say. This Como After Dark, a little more blackened. Um, and this one shows a little more like deep sea ocean kind of vibes. We have darkness here in this kind of plummy shade and a little depth in this brown, although it's not an ultra dark brown. So many, many directions. Oh, by the way, look at my strawberry. I made. That's one of my rocks. And then uh, last night I knocked it out of the park with a ladybug. 
How appropriate for outdoor, right? God, I was so enthusiastic. I just about poured that sip of coffee down my front. I'm going for a splash with this one. Okay, guys. When I know the eye look is going to be a little bit intense, I'm pulling for like my profusion brushes. I'm wanting a little more precision. The Persona, a great everyday option. Sometimes I will still pull that into intricate looks, but I mean, I, I kind of think that this is the ease, the brush of ease. And then these are more my brushes of detail. We're just going to start out and do some Toasted in Tuscany lightly in the crease. Okay, we're just gonna get it going. We already have Milani eyeshadow primer on. Warm ourselves up a little bit because I know I've got some other plans for this crease. These two mattes are coming out to play today. I'm really interested in those and I haven't used them enough yet. Okay, there's that really light little crease action here. Oh, and there's a matte cream. I enjoy having that. You'll like using that on the edge of looks. Am I sold on this palette yet? I'm not quite sure. What are we on here? Day four of trying it? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Yeah, fourth day. Then I'm going to go to Gelat O down in here. Now, I bought this in person in my Ulta store. I haven't done that with a palette in a while, but I felt much safer getting it in store than asking Ulta to ship it. So yeah, I went with the girls and they got new caboodles. I have a little video about it. I'm taking a little bit of this Capri Fun right here. Kind of mustardy. I don't know. I want this to be a fun look. And what does this smell like? Is it supposed to smell like some kind of beverage? Some kind of spritz. I don't know. It doesn't smell bad. I mean, there's a little fruity vibe. I don't know if there's a little kind of a champagne-ness to that scent. It's fine. I mean, I have no problem with it. It's not as strong as some of the smells I've picked up on a different palettes, like my peach palette or like the chocolate palettes that they've done. We're yellowing things up a little bit. I want to build that a little more. I really want that to be visible up outside of the crease, you know? going to take some Mamma Mia here. Really just wanting to see these two shades buddy up. They make me think peanut butter and jelly. Oh, that's a star. Loving, living. It's reaching the crease too. And we'll blend, but yeah. I should say, when I was talking about college dance teams, like I love LSU Tiger Girls, but University of Minnesota also does really awesome in dance too. They need more love. Okay, we've taken it all over the outer lid, pulled it up to that crease, then take a brush. Oh, those two shades coming together, it's like a sunset. Thinking of adding more Mamma Mia now, still with my fluffy brush. We don't want to over blend. We don't want to blend stuff away, but I do really want to see those two colors become one. Feeling like I want to enhance the shape of the outside of this eye just a bit more. And I think that's going to happen with Mamma Mia still. Really touching that crease, bringing it out in the direction of the brow. Where are you going today, Em? Well, I'm not going to preschool screening. Probably going to go on a walk and drop my rocks around and be a rock fairy. Are we liking? Very enjoyable. Feeling like pulling in some more warmth up above too, like maybe this feeling saucy even. It's like a terracotta orangey shade. Just right up in here. Camera, hi. Right up in here. Too Faced knows how to do mattes. What I was saying was when I got cut off, Too Faced mattes tend to be incredibly consistent. The shimmers sometimes leave you scratching your head a little bit, like why did we do that? We know they know how to do a really smooth, full-on pigmented shimmer, but yet we have some of these sparkles. I mean, it's just a thing. A lot of brands are doing it. A little more Capri Fun. Don't lose that. Mm, love the pigment in these mattes. Gelato coming up right under the brow. I think I've shaped it where I want it, and now we've got to decide what's going on the lid. I think I'm going to do spritz and glitz, okay? Let's try with a brush first. Picking it up with my little, oh, yep. The right decision was made. This little um, small flat Morphe brush. Oh yeah. She's going on just fine like that. See that? Ooh, best look I've done yet. I was thinking last night, will I do the light blue? But I already exhibited the light blue. Light blue's solid. Yes, it's even touching the inner corner. It's taking up every ounce of real estate I have right there. Wow, 
get it. Get it. I remember when me and Belle and Nana went to see Mamma Mia. I'm using that Mamma Mia shade, just adding a little bit. We went to see it on stage at SIU one spring or summer. Was it a summer theater thing? It was so good and so fun. At this point in time, I'm gonna need to do some liner. I've been reaching for my M Cosmetics Illustrative liner a lot because frankly, I got a lot of others that are drying out. So we're just gonna go across the top. I'm undecided as to what I wanna do on the lower lash line because I'm liking all this lift and all this attention right on the top part of the eye. We're winging it out. Ooh. I like this purple because it's really not like flakes of shimmer. It looks pearly. It really looks cool. The texture of it, it's, it's bouncing off the lid. There's not really any like flakiness to it. Seeing it in the pan, you might expect there's gonna be some flake, but there's really not, not with that. Every weekend I do some meal prep for Bub for his lunches during the week that he takes to work. And this week I tried doing um, that egg roll in a bowl for him. It involves like a sausage and you brown out the sausage and then you get a like, really easy bag of coleslaw. You like saute all that. You add in some ginger and some soy sauce and a few different ingredients, but it's pretty minimal. It turned out really yummy. It was the kind of thing that I thought he'd really like and I'd maybe kind of like, but I tried a bite and it was really good. But you know, if you're trying to do any kind of low carb stuff, he kind of prefers having something low carb in his lunch. And that was good. All right, we got our liner on. I think I'm to the point of stop messing with it. I'm gonna do some mascara and then I'm gonna do some of my neat little semi-dramatic half lash. This stuff that I get from Amazon, I'll link to them. They're really pretty, but they're much more big time than like your little Ardell half lashes. They're not ridiculous, but you know what I mean? They add a little more thickness. But before I go in with the mascara, I might wanna just add a little more of that purple. Really, if you missed out on Huda Desert Dusk, this was a very Desert Dusk-esque kind of look. I would say I'm liking this palette so far, but I still feel like there are shades to be experimented with still, more looks to be tried. It's kind of a so far so good situation with the knowledge that some of those shimmers just need help. Mainly I'm looking at these four, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They've needed a little bit of help. Well, since then, not as bad. Ooh, I feel like that brown actually, I mean, I'm just getting inspired by the placement here, but that brown with the purple beside it could be really pretty too. I'm gonna use my Hard Candy Lengthen. Now, my tube said something different on it. Like, it still had the Ultimate Lash Extension thing, but it says Lengthen, and then you go on the website and it says something different on the side. But it's the same mascara, it's the one I ordered. I'm just loving this look. This is what you should do. Use colors you love. I hope this palette kind of brings my eyeshadow into a more fun place for spring. Um, I still want to like show everybody like a, a blue look with it. And I like that the shades of blue are not pure blue, not like royal blue, but it's the light blue that they put in and then some darker colors. That feels more approachable to me. That mascara is so good, by the way. I know this look is very busy and it's kind of hard to, especially with the winged liner on, it's hard to focus in and be like, what is that mascara doing exactly? But it's lengthening. <laughs> and you can see more about it in the part two of Hard Candy. You know, I love being in charge of my own content and not having to answer to anybody or being on some kind of schedule of sponsorships or something. Like I really enjoy just doing what I want to do and if one fine day the idea changes, that's totally cool. I'm gonna pop on the lash and then I'm gonna hop on back. I'm back. Aren't those great for that little cat eye flick there? And then you look down, you got that great little peekaboo purple. And then all I did on the lower lash line was just a tiny bit of Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water, but I really kind of like the effect of leaving that lower lash line bare for this look. So for lips, I'm gearing up to do something kind of nude. I pulled out my um, lipstick here from Maybelline. This is their Shine, what was the name of that Shine formula? Shine Compulsion. And this is the shade Baddest Beige. And it's real nude. Just hang on. Center of the lip mostly. Well, working around everywhere, but mostly center of the lip. Hard Candy Kiss and Tell. Gonna work on that and turn the outside. Yep, once you put this on, you're like, oh, there's where her lip starts and ends. Okay, 
get a nice little definition going there. And then part of the reason why I pulled for this was because we have that lovely brush. This is where it really slays because look at the merging of all of that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The lip looks honestly perfect to me right now, but I did pull out a gloss to put on top and I want to do it. Um, this is Moon from the Lifter Gloss line. Just a little bit, okay? Trust your gut and put it on. Didn't change the color too much, but just gave it a little more. What I saw in person as I put the gloss on was immediately less lines, more of a look of evenness, fullness, that kind of thing. There we go. Are we doing more blush? The answer to that is yes. Pulled out this one, my Huda Glowish Blush in Caring Coral. Just to pop on top a little bit, like I want more. So this is probably a little peachier than what we had on at the start, but I think it just works with the warmth radiating from the eye, that nude lip, a little bit of that, and then maybe just a smidge of some finishing powder, and then we can call this a day. I'm using a little Kosas Cloud Set in Airy, a little bit off the tip of a Morphe under eye bullet brush, and hit right in here. I am so into the look. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this look as well. Um, let me know if you're interested in seeing more looks with that new Too Faced palette. It definitely is capable of a lot, but I am loving. So far, this is my favorite look I've done with it. Thanks for your time, everyone. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.